Today on Alex Nottos, we're out here taking a look at the 2015 Lexus IS sedan. This particular model is the IS 350F Sport. The IS hasn't received any significant updates for 2015, but we're looking at the IS again because it is a highly competitive entry in this segment. It's one of the most reliable entries in the segment. It also is unusual in that it is one of the few entries that still has naturally aspirated V6 engines under the hood. In case you're wondering, there will be a review on the Infiniti Q50, which is obviously a very direct competitor to the IS 350 coming up very very soon. Like it or not, the IS250 does not have a front end that looks like any of the German sedans available in this segment. What's going on up front is that they have divorced the daytime running lamp module from the headlamp module itself. That's what's in this Nike swoosh right there. We're in the optional F Sport trim, and the F Sport trim is the sporty version of the IS. It receives this very large, exaggerated grille opening. We also get these ducts right over here that also remove the fog lamps. F Sport is to Lexus what M Sport is to BMW. That means we don't receive any extra power under the hood. The changes focus mainly on handling as well as appearance. Speaking of appearance, this F Sport front grille is very attractive in my mind. Lexus was previously associated with very bland designs, restrained, elegant designs, but definitely nothing aggressive or outside the box. And whatever you think of this front grille, it's definitely not boring. HID headlamps are standard for 2015 IS models, and LED headlamps are an option. And those would be full LED headlamps like these, LED high beams and LED low beams. A common complaint about previous generation IS models was that they were too small compared to the German competition, but that's different for this generation of the IS. In this generation, the IS is about the same size as the BMW 3 Series. This means this is definitely longer than something like an Audi A3. However, what many people fail to realize is that this entire segment of luxury vehicles are not terribly large in general. So even though this is priced higher than your average Honda Accord, the Honda Accord is much, much bigger. In fact, the Lexus IS is right about the same size as the Acura ILX, which is a derivative of the Honda Civic. That size difference is important if you're looking at stepping up from any mass market entry into to luxury vehicles like this, the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, and the Audi A4. These are all a decent amount smaller than that mass market counterpart at the same price. It's very obvious when you take a look at this versus the Lexus ES, which is a Toyota Avalon-based vehicle, roughly the same price category as the Lexus IS, but much, much larger. The reason you'd buy the IS over the ES is all about handling, but you do sacrifice interior space, especially in the back seat. Lexus loves flowing lines in their latest designs. And that's obvious right here when you take a look at the sill that curves up, and that line continues right across the back here with this sort of teardrop-shaped rear tail lamp. Those tail lamps bulge out a little bit, mirroring the headlamps, and they continue on to the trunk lid, getting narrower along here. We have dual exhaust tips on all IS models. You'll notice we have a very clean rear bumper design, and that is because we do not have parking sensors on our IS model. We just have a backup camera. As with essentially every other luxury vehicle in this segment, we have two different engines to choose from, about 200 horsepower and about 300 horsepower. But what's very different than every other entry in this segment are the engines and the way that they deliver the power, because both of these engines are V6s and they're both naturally aspirated. That's very different from the competition because in general the Europeans offer strict turbocharged or supercharged engine lineups. Even the Cadillac ATS uses a turbocharged four-cylinder engine to more appropriately compete with this. There is a naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine in the ATS, but it really falls below the Lexus IS250 in terms of comparisons. It's really designed to compete more with the likes of the Buick Verano as well as the Acura ILX on that bottom end. Very much like BMW's 320i is not really the direct corollary to the IS250. It's really the BMW 328. Now the 2.5 liter base engine produces 204 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. You can immediately notice the difference between that and the rest of the competition because pretty much everybody else uses a 2 liter turbocharged engine producing between 250 and 260 pound-feet of torque. You get a lot more torque out of the competition. This 3.5 liter V6 in the IS350 produces 360 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. That's about the same horsepower as most of the entries, but it is down on torque versus the turbocharged competition. The smaller V6 as well as both all-wheel drive models use a six-speed automatic transmission, and the IS350 uses an eight-speed automatic in both the regular and the F-Sport trim. In my preview video, many of you asked what the intake sound generator was, and was it a digital sound generator? It's not in the IS350. Lexus doesn't do digital noise at this point. That means this is very different from the BMW M products, which pipe canned digital noise into the cabin. This is actually the intake sound generator right here on the engine. It's a small diaphragm inside this container and it allows the engine's own natural intake noise to be essentially amplified and directed towards the firewall of the vehicle so you can hear it a little better. Front seat comfort comes in at 8 out of 10 points. Our model has an electric tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion. 
We also have a multi-way adjustable driver's seat. One thing to keep in mind is that we only have a two-way adjustable lumbar support that makes the seat a little bit less configurable than some of the competition. You should also know that the sport seats in the F Sport model are relatively narrow, so larger people may find them uncomfortable. For me, at six feet tall and about 190 pounds, I find them just fine. They hit me in all the right places. They're very comfortable seats. They give you a lot of lateral bolstering as well. Another thing to keep in mind is that the passenger seat lacks adjustable lumbar support. I find that the best way to compare vehicles is in combined legroom. That would be front legroom plus rear legroom because the length of the seat track varies from vehicle to vehicle. So some vehicle you can move the front seats much further back than you can in others. That's definitely true in the IS model where the front seats come a little bit further back than some of the competition. That means that in the rear we get a slightly reduced legroom number and up front we get a slightly larger legroom number. On paper that would lead you to believe that the IS is a little bit less comfortable than some of the competition, but in actuality the IS is just about as comfortable. I still have about two and a half inches of legroom left sitting right here behind myself. I also have an adequate amount of headroom. Headroom is a little bit limited in many vehicles in this category, and the IS is no exception. If I lean my head way back, my head does touch the ceiling. We also get this roof line that plunges a little bit toward the rear. Like many vehicles in this segment, moving on over to the center seat, you'll notice a definite lack of headroom. I do have to crane my head to one side in order to fit. Moving over once more to the far side of the vehicle, where this front seat was adjusted for a six foot five passenger, I have a little bit less legroom, but I still have an adequate amount of room for myself. Rear passengers get a softly padded center armrest with cup holders integrated right there, but no storage cubby on the back. And the rear seats do fold in a 60-40 folding fashion. The biggest thing you're gonna notice about the IS versus some of the competition is this relatively compact cargo area. I do have a 24 inch roller bag and a 26 inch roller bag in here, but if I push them all the way to the front, you'll notice I don't have as much room behind them as you'll find in a 3 Series or an Audi A4. I have to say that surprised me a little bit because this is about the same size on the outside and the same size on the inside as the BMW 3 Series, but the hood takes up a little bit more room, giving you a little bit less trunk space than the 3 Series. The rear suspension design is also a little bit different, giving you a little bit less usable space in the trunk. Overall, I'm going to have to give this 6 out of 10 points in my exclusive trunk comfort index. Inside we get four-way adjustable headrests as well as height adjustable seatbelts for both the driver and the front passenger. Like many luxury vehicles these days, leather is not standard in the IS. The standard seating surface is this new Lux imitation leather. It is perforated and it is heated and cooled in our particular model. We're inside the F Sport interior, which means we also get these exaggerated bolsters on the side cushions and the seat bottom cushion. Lexus tells us that one of the benefits of new Lux is that the new Lux can actually be bonded to the seat bottom cushion itself. And that would be the foam that makes up the cushion material. That means that this bolster on the side of the seat bottom cushion is much less likely to bunch up as the car ages. As you'd expect from a luxury vehicle, the door panels are all soft touch plastics. We do have that same new Lux material in the matching red color on our particular model right there in the center. I'm not normally a fan of most red interiors, but the shade of this red interior is actually quite attractive to my eye. The interior of the IS is heavily styled. It's really obvious over here on the passenger side of the vehicle. You can see that we have this line that runs across the top of the dashboard right there on either side of the infotainment display. Then the dashboard bumps out in this level and then goes back in and then bumps out again around the glove box. Wood trim is of course available in certain models of the IS and if we open up this glove box it reveals a relatively small glove compartment. You can see more of the highly styled interior over here in the center. We have this hood cover for the gauges that curls down right here around the power button. Two large air vents that bump out the same as the rest. And then on top of this small infotainment display we have the center channel speaker. The standard infotainment system in the IS uses a 7 inch display audio screen. It doesn't offer you navigation in that base model. That's not particularly unusual in this luxury car segment where navigation is frequently optional. What is a little bit unusual is that these graphics are a little bit old school compared to some of the other entries in this segment. The screen is also notably smaller than you'll find in the BMW 3 Series. However, it's about the same size as you'll find in the Mercedes and Volvo and certain Audi competitors. If you want to know more about this audio system, go ahead and click that banner at the bottom of your screen. It'll be taken on over to our dedicated infotainment review. Working our way down the dashboard, again, we have those two large air vents and the analog clock. We also have the standard two-zone climate control with some touch buttons and mostly physical buttons right here. You'll notice that the temperature up and down sliders are actually touch buttons. You can either click on the blue portion or the red portion or slide your finger around. Below that, you'll find the optical disc player for that infotainment system. Our particular model has the optional Mark Levinson audio system and the navigation system. So right here behind this little door, you will find the SD card for the navigation database. If we zoom out from that a little bit, you'll notice that we have the heated and cooled seats in our particular model. And we have a very traditional shifter right here in the center console. 
drive is all the way down. This is gated all the way down at the bottom and then manual is over to the left up for up and down for down. To the right of the shifter, we have the Lexus Remote Touch Controller. This is my least favorite input method for infotainment and navigation systems available right now. It's sort of a joystick, and as we move this around, there's actually a cursor on the screen that moves around with it. I go into this in more detail in the infotainment review. This just isn't quite as logical as the click wheels or the touch screens that we see in other vehicles out there. My dislike of this system is all down to the input method because the few Lexus vehicles that still offer a touch screen with this exact same software, I find very intuitive, very easy to use but this particular input method just isn't that easy to interact with. Behind the shifter, we have our drive mode selector. It is a rotary knob that also pushes down. So if you want sport mode, you click it once to the right. If you want sport plus mode, you click it a second time to the right. For eco, we click it to the left. For normal mode, we press down. This knob controls different things depending on how your IS is equipped. Since our IS has the optional adaptive dampers, this actually controls the way the suspension behaves in addition to the transmission and the throttle mapping traction control and stability control disable button, and a snow mode right down here. Positioned towards the back of the center console, we have two very large cup holders. They are fixed, there's no lid to them, but they are positioned a little bit close to the elbow for the driver and the front passenger. You can see this front passenger seat is in the position suitable for a six foot four person, and this cup holder is actually almost behind that passenger. On the other side of this, we have a softly padded center armrest. If we open that up, it reveals our USB and auxiliary input. There are actually two USB ports in this version. We also have a little cable clip, so that way the cable for your USB device is kept in an optimum position to keep it away from the latch. That is kind of a nice feature. The storage area is a little bit oddly shaped, but I had no problem fitting things like wallets, cameras, that sort of thing right there in the center console. For reasons that no one understands, the Cadillac ATS does not get the LCD instrument cluster you see in the rest of the Cadillac lineup. That leaves the IS, F Sport, and the Volvo V60 and S60 to be the only vehicles in this category with full LCD instrument clusters like this. This takes things to an interesting new level by incorporating some physical elements as well. So this ring around the tachometer is actually a physical element that slides side to side when you activate it via a button on the steering wheel. When left in the center, it changes if we activate sport mode. So right now we're in the regular drive mode. If I activate sport mode, you can see that it turns white. If we click the mode back to normal or eco, the display stays essentially the same, but adds the eco option right there in the center. Revving the engine causes the display to turn red slightly before you hit red line. So as we climb on up, you'll notice it turns red right there. In this particular display, we have the fuel gauge on the right and the temperature of the engine on the left. If we slide this over to the side, then we have access to a wider variety of vehicle information and configuration options. Right here, we have our typical trip computer. You can see the eco indicator, tire pressure, gear position display, as well as our fuel economy right there. If we did put the vehicle in drive, you'll notice that the gear position indicator turns into this tiered affair, and it will actually tier on up depending on which gear you're in. If navigation was activated, we would get navigation information on this particular option. We also get complete audio information. This display is not as configurable as you'll find in certain Cadillac models that do have the LCD instrument cluster, but you can change things like the needle color, whether you want the rev indicator to uh, show up and the rev peak, things like that, but you really can't change the look too much. The LCD instrument cluster is controlled via this button arrangement on the steering wheel. We use this button to slide that ring side to side and allow us access to the rest of the vehicle settings and options in that display. And we use this joystick to actually navigate around that display on the side, up, down, side to side, and click to enter. I also have a back button right over here. Moving out to the steering wheel, we have an F Sport steering wheel with F Sport badging right there on the bottom. It is a three spoke wheel with sport grips, contrasting stitching, and shift paddles on the left and the right. Down on the left, up on the right. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have our audio control buttons with dedicated phone hang up and pick up buttons and a voice command button. You'll find the cruise control on a stock that turns with the steering wheel on the right side. And this is the button bank I showed you earlier. As you can see to the left of the driver, the highly styled interior continues all the way around the cabin. Likely because the Lexus ES is the most popular Lexus model in the US, people's opinions of the brand itself tend to be skewed towards the way that Lexus ES drives. But that's not the way the average Lexus drives because Lexus does compete directly with the 3 Series, the 5 Series, and the 7 Series with the IS, the GS, and the LS. And I'm not talking about competing in the way that Volvo competes with those brands or the way that Acura competes with those brands. Lexus is one of the only brands that competes directly head on with all three of those types of vehicles. The IS competes with the 3 Series, the GS competes with the 5 Series, and the LS competes with the 7 Series. All three of those vehicles are rear wheel drive, and these are all very direct handling, very direct feeling vehicles out on the road, even including that Lexus LS. 
The pinnacle of handling inside the Lexus portfolio really is this Lexus IS sedan, as well as the Lexus RC two-door coupe, which you can think of sort of as the coupe version of the IS and the GS melded together. Handling in the IS is absolutely excellent. I'm gonna give this 10 out of 10 points. It's not just about the grip though, which is very good in this IS F Sport model. The F Sport model does get staggered rubber, which means we have wider tires out back, and we also get grippier rubber on all four corners. Handling also has to do with the feel, the precision, the way the car behaves in the corners, etc. The IS feels incredibly well balanced. It's very, very precise. You just point this car and it goes where you want it to go. It is rear wheel drive, as I said earlier, and it definitely has that rear wheel drive dynamic you expect out of a luxury performance vehicle. Now, obviously something like a BMW M3 will handle better than this vehicle, and it will actually feel better than this vehicle as well, but it's not really a comparable vehicle to the IS350 F Sport. Ultimately, that is the tricky problem with comparing the IS with other vehicles in its category is that you have to keep in mind that other vehicles in this category, specifically the BMW 3 Series, are available with a wide variety of very expensive options that really improve handling. Now on the regular 3 Series, very few of those things will really improve handling feel out on the road, but they do improve grip. So you can get wider tires in a variety of different 3 Series versions, but none of them are going to feel quite as connected to the driver as the IS. It's very obvious out on a track. Now, unfortunately, that on a track comment is a little bit important to keep in mind because the IS does extremely well in track situations. But I'd have to say in everyday living, I think that the BMW 3 Series in many forms does a little bit better. A lot of that comes down to acceleration. I'm gonna have to give this six to seven out of 10 points when it comes to acceleration. I did run from zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds in this IS350 F Sport model. You may be thinking that 5.6 seconds sounds like a good time. However, a Nissan Altima with a V6 and a CVT will run from zero to 60 just about as fast as this IS. The BMW 335i is significantly faster. In addition, for reasons that I cannot explain, the zero to 60 time in back-to-back -back tests fluctuated between 5.6 and six seconds, and they really don't fluctuate that much in some of the competition. In fact, even something like a Volvo S60 is going to go from zero to 60 faster than this. Acura's own TLX will also go faster zero to 60 than this. Things are also a problem at the bottom of the food chain because the IS250 is noticeably slower than the BMW 328i or the Mercedes-Benz C300 out on the road. Now, admittedly, the V6 engine in the IS250 is much smoother than those four-cylinder turbocharged engines in the Germans, but you have to decide how important smoothness is to you. When it comes to braking, the IS also scores 10 out of 10 points. This has some incredible brake pads in this F Sport model, and braking feel is excellent all the way across the IS lineup. Distances are short, and fade resistance is excellent. Again, you'll find shorter stopping distances in something like a BMW M3, but versus your average entry in this segment, this is definitely towards the top. Cabin noise and cabin isolation has long been something that Lexus has been known for. The IS does fairly well here as well. The BMW 3 Series in its current generation is just about as quiet, but the Mercedes-Benz C300 and C400 are quieter than this generation of IS. I actually give this eight out of 10 points when it comes to cabin noise. Ride can be a matter of opinion, and I'm gonna give this seven out of 10 points, keeping in mind we are in the F Sport version, which does have a firmer suspension and lower profile tires. If you get the base versions, then I think the ride score goes up to eight points out of 10. Going back to my comments about the IS on a track, the IS is excellent in the corners, not as good as the competition in a straight line. This eight-speed automatic transmission doesn't appear to have as low of a first gear ratio as some of the competition, especially that is noticeable in the zero to 30 scores. So if the IS isn't about straight line performance, what is it about? It's really about driving this vehicle on your favorite winding mountain road. It is an awful lot of fun. Admittedly, most vehicles in this segment will be fun, but the IS is about fun with precision. This vehicle definitely feels like it's one with the driver. If that surprises you, then I think the reason is because you haven't driven a Lexus IS in some time. While the Lexus brand as a whole has always been about reliability, the IS brand specifically has always been about driving precision. When it comes to the real world, straight line performance is probably higher on most people's shopping lists than handling precision because the handling numbers aren't that much different. The road grip is about the same in most of the competition, but it's the feel where the IS really excels. And personally, I am willing to trade a little bit of handling feel for an awful lot of acceleration improvement. And that really is your decision. Pricing for 2015 runs from $36,550 for the base IS250 up to a top level of about $51,000 if you get a fully loaded all-wheel drive F-Sport 350. If you're just after the more powerful engine, that will set you back $40,065 for just the base IS350. If you want an IS350 F-Sport, that will start at $43,650 for the rear-wheel drive IS350. 
Lexus doesn't have quite as many standalone options as some of the competition, but the pricing structure is more complicated than something like Acura. So I'll let you refer to the chart on the left for some of the bundled pricing that I came up with. One of the takeaways here is the IS250 F Sport, which is just over $40,000. That's one of the best handling and best feeling vehicles available in this segment. Rather unfortunately, it's just not the swiftest. The IS250 F Sport is very similar to the IS350 F Sport we've been looking at, only you get considerably less thrust. It's actually about 33% less power. The big difference, however, is when you compare the IS250 to the competition. Most of the competition gets about 40 to 50 more horsepower than that IS250, although their engines are not nearly as smooth. The V6 engine under the hood of this vehicle is buttery smooth, and pretty much all the competition uses a turbocharged four-cylinder engine to compete with this. Handling, and specifically handling feel, is the prime reason to buy the IS250 over the rest of the competition. The IS250 doesn't have a perfect weight balance like you find in some of the vehicles out there, but it is very, very close. What's different is the handling feel. The IS250 and the IS350 are very, very direct in terms of feel. The feel is excellent out on the road. I actually equate this to the Cadillac ATS. I think both of them tie as the best handling option in this segment. Now, many people dispute this, but I am not alone in saying that the IS250 and IS350 are better handling than the comparable BMW 3 Series. Comparable is the key there, of course, because there are BMW 3 Series models that handle better than the IS350 F Sport we're seeing right here, but they're not exactly comparable. They have much larger tires on them. They have more power under the hood, etc. Obviously, a BMW M3 will definitely perform better than this IS350. The difference is very noticeable out on a track. If you get the IS350 on the track with the BMW 335i and the wheels and tires are approximately similar, this has a much better feel. You'll go around the corners faster in the IS than you will in the 335. Rather unfortunately, the 335 will go faster in the straightaways, so unless your track is very small and very turny, that 3 Series will be ultimately faster than the IS but it won't feel quite as nice. Now, personally, I like the feel of a turbocharged engine. I don't mind turbo lag. I kind of like the way the torque plateau comes on strong and stays on strong and then tapers off at the end. But many people prefer the way naturally aspirated engines feel. Naturally aspirated engines build their torque as the RPMs rise in a little bit more linear fashion. It's not just up, stay strong, and then flop down at the end. And that's exactly what's going on in the IS350, the Cadillac ATS with the 3.6, and the Infiniti Q50 with the 3.7 liter V6. Those are very different in terms of feel of acceleration out on the road and out on a track versus the Germans, which use turbocharged or supercharged engines. The main selling points for the IS are that handling ability, value, and reliability. Reliability in the Lexus brand and the IS specifically has been very high compared with the rest of the competition. You'll also notice that although the IS250 and 350 are priced a little bit higher, higher than the Cadillac ATS, they are significantly lower than the BMW 3 Series or the recently redesigned Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Mercedes has decided to really separate the C-Class from the rest of the competition in this segment by making it considerably more expensive and considerably nicer on the inside. So the C-Class has a nicer interior than the IS, but you'll definitely pay for it. Base C-Class models use a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It's definitely not as smooth as the base V6 and the IS, but then again, it has more power. BMW's 328i is definitely a little bit rough around the edges with that four-cylinder engine compared to the silky smooth V6 and the IS250, but again, the turbocharged four has more power and is definitely faster than the IS250. The 335i, as I said, is definitely faster in a straight line, but you will pay more for it. A similarly configured BMW model will set you back between two and $4,000. Now on the Mercedes front, this also competes with the Mercedes-Benz CLA 250 because of the pricing structure that Mercedes has for that C-Class, as well as the low price of the IS250. The CLA is definitely smaller than the IS. It also isn't as nice on the inside. Cadillac's ATS is a solid contender. It's one of the better handling vehicles in the segment. In fact, the Cadillac ATS seems like a Cadillac copy in terms of handling ability and handling feel to the last generation BMW 3 Series. The current 3 Series has really become a little bit larger and a little bit softer. The downsides for the ATS are the base four-cylinder engine, which is definitely rough and underpowered. We also get an instrument cluster that's not as attractive as most of the entries in this segment. It doesn't get Cadillac's really nice disco dash that you find in the larger and more expensive Cadillacs. Although the Acura TLX and the Lincoln MKZ are frequently seen as value alternatives to something like the IS or the BMW 3 Series, they're not the same kind of vehicle and they actually compete more directly with the Lexus ES, which is based on the Toyota Avalon. The big difference between those entries and the IS, of course, are the handling abilities of the vehicle because of the rear-wheel drive drivetrain on the IS and the front-wheel drive drivetrains on those other options out there. Again, more similar to the Lexus ES, which is a front-wheel drive vehicle. Now, similarly sized but front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive are the Volvo S60 and the Audi A4. 
the IS handles significantly better than either of those two options. The Audi A4 has a great deal of room on the inside, but the Volvo is definitely smaller than the IS. It specifically has a rather cramped back seat, which is why Volvo is bringing their long wheelbase model to the US. Now, both of those models are significantly faster than the correlating Lexus IS model because they both used turbocharged or supercharged engines, or in the case of certain Volvo models, a turbocharged and supercharged engine. Very much like the BMW comparison, however, where the IS shines is handling ability because it certainly outhandles both of those options. The Lexus IS continues to deliver a high level of refinement, a high level of handling ability, and excellent reliability and low cost of ownership. That's exactly what the average Lexus owner expects out of their performance vehicle. It is also one of the best handling vehicles and the best feeling vehicles in this segment. Rather unfortunately, it's not the fastest. The Lexus IS should definitely be on your shopping list, but I think you should look very hard at that Infiniti Q50 as well. It's an excellent deal. It's also very attractive inside and out. It's a tough call, but I think at this moment, I would put the Q50 tops in this segment, the IS 350F Sport number two, and then a BMW 328i number three. I actually like the way the BMW 328i drives out on the road. It's a little bit lighter and more nimble feeling than the 335i. But in general, I prefer handling ability to thrust, and that's largely why my particular selections are in that order. If you prefer thrust over the rest, then definitely get that 335i. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2015 IS350 F Sport. Go ahead and click on that subscribe banner on the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. You can also find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos over at Twitter. You can also go over to alexandautos.com, email your questions to alex at alexandautos. Go ahead and thumbs up this video, comment on this video, do all those other things, and I'll see you next week.